So I'm now recording. Uh, so, so last time we started discussing FPPF descent and, and let me just remind you uh, what the goal of that was, like why that was relevant for us. So the goal was to show that if we have a quasi coherent sheaf um, and, and we take the associated sheaf on the associated pre sheaf on the atoll site, so that was just given by uh, taking the values of its pullback to any object in the atoll site, um, that's going to be a sheaf on the atoll site. And then we were also going to use that to conclude that a functor which is representable, so, so maps of, of X schemes into a, into a given scheme, is also a sheaf on the atoll or FPPF site. So, so uh, I'm about to dive back into that proof and remind you where we were and what we've done so far. Uh, but before I do that, are there any questions on that goal or the uh, method by which we're going to try to do it? All right, so, so let me start by reminding you what the main, the main theorem was. So the main theorem, uh, which is called FPPF descent, for quasi-coherent sheaves. Was the following. It, it was that if, if F uh, from U to X was a, a FPPF cover. So let me just remind you that just finitely presented uh, and, and faithfully flat. Um, so fidèlement plat, e présentation fini. Um, then, then the theorem was that F star, that the pullback induces an equivalence of categories. From quasi coherent sheaves on X to descent data for quasi coherent sheaves relative to U over X. So maybe I'll verbally remind you what that is. So descent data for quasi-coherent sheaf on U over X is a quasi-coherent sheaf on U. Um, you can take its two pullbacks to U cross U over X. You're supposed to think of those as U is a cover, U cross U is the double intersection of objects in the cover. Um, and then you take the two pullbacks of your sheaf to U cross U and you have an isomorphism between them. And that isomorphism has to satisfy an additional condition. When you pull it back to U cross U cross U over X, it has to satisfy a cosecal condition. So this was a, like a fancy way of saying, well, if U was just a Zariski cover, it's saying you have an, a cover by opens, a sheaf on each object of the cover, gluing data, and that gluing data has to satisfy the post So hopefully that, that kind of is an example that's familiar from the, the, the theory of, for example, vector bundles. And we're generalizing that to the case where U is not just a cover by opens, it's, it's some kind of fancier option, like a FPPF. Okay, and, and, and just a reminder, I mean, the relevance to us is that HL covers are examples of FPPF covers. Okay, so, so we were in the middle of the proof of this. Um, we so far have not really proved anything about it. We proved the lemma. So, so, so the goal was we were gonna first prove that this functor is fully faithful. So what that means is that if we have a morphism of quasi-coherent sheaves, that's just the same thing as a morphism of descent data. In other words, we have to show that the map on HOM sets is a bijection. Um, and let me just remind you, we, we had decided we wanted to prove that in the following way. Uh, we were given two sheaves, F1 and F2, quasi-coherent sheaves on X. And we want the following diagram to be an equalizer diagram. So we wanted I take HOM on X from F1 to F2. Well, this maps via F star to HOM on U, uh, the F star F1 to F star F2. And then we had two different maps. one via the first projection and one via the second projection. The HOM 
on u cross u over x. And this was hum uh, between, uh, I guess, pi 1 star, f star, f1, and pi 2 star, f star. Sorry, that's not right. Pi 1 star, f star, f2. And this was uh, the same thing, but with, with pi 2. And, and I said I wanted this to be an equalizer diagram. Right now, that doesn't make sense because these are, are different, a priori different. But because pi 1 composed with that, or f composed with pi 1 is the same as f composed with pi 2, these are actually economically equal. And let me just draw the relevant diagram here so we can keep track of all the morphisms. So we have u cross u over x that maps in two different ways to u, and that maps to x. Um, so, so what do we want? We want this to be an equalizer diagram. Okay, are there any questions about this goal and why it, why it proves full faithfulness? Does, does anyone want me to remind them why that's the same thing? All right, so, so let me just say a word about it. So, so faithfulness is just the injectivity of this map f, f upper star. So that's, that's part, of, part, of the, um, part of being an equalizer. So being an equalizer means this is injective and its image is precisely the stuff here that goes to the same place under these two maps. So injectivity is faithfulness. Fullness is, I claim, the fact that the image is precisely the stuff that goes here. So what you have to check, and this was an exercise, and it's, it's not a it's, it's really just an unwinding definitions exercise, is that being a morphism of descent data, so a morphism here is a morphism of descent data, if and only if it goes to the same place under these two maps. Okay, and uh, what have we done? Well, towards this goal, we'd, we'd proven the following lemma. So we've proven that if R to S is a faithfully flat map of rings, ring map, and if n is an R module, then the following uh, sequence, so n to n tensor s to n tensor s tensor s, um, so there are two maps here. This was n goes to n tensor 1. This is uh, n tensor s goes to n tensor s tensor 1. And this one was n tensor s goes to n tensor 1 tensor s. So we showed that this is an equalizer diagram. OK. Are there any questions about any of this? So, so this lemma we proved last time, or, or the goal regarding full faithfulness? So just a reminder, we proved this lemma using what's maybe my favorite trick in this entire subject, um, which is, uh, which is uh, you know, this, this sort of trick of making a section by base changing to S. I think it's a really, really beautiful and clever trick. When I say this entire subject, I mean the subject of IPP, as I said, not, not HL homology. I, I have many, favorite many more favorite theorems that are coming up. Um, all right. So maybe I'll pause uh, for five seconds to see if there are questions. And if not, I will continue with the argument. All right, so, so let's, let's use this lemma to prove full faithfulness. So proof of full faithfulness. Can you see what I'm writing here, or is this is this too small? I can see it fine. It's too small. It's, it's fine for me. Oh, it's fine. Okay. Uh, cool. All right. So so um so so step one is to to reduce to the case of an affine morphism. 
So reduce to the case where u to x is affine. Okay, and I'm, I'm actually gonna leave this for you as an exercise. It's not an entirely trivial exercise. If you, if you have trouble doing it, you should take a look at chapter six of Neuron Models, uh, this book by Bosch, Luke Kabomer, and Reno, which I've, I've uh, mentioned on the Discord and also uh, at the beginning of class. And I think um, someone has posted a, uh, uh, maybe has suggested a way to find it in the Zoom chat. Um, so that's, uh, so, so this exercise is going to, it's going to use, it's going to use um, that your map is a finite presentation. Um, in fact, it'll use a little less than that, so it'll use that the map is, is quasi-compact. Um, so, so in fact, you'll you'll see, you'll see that um, that that um, this theorem, which I've been stating for FPPF morphisms, and that's just because we've defined an FPPF site, is actually true for FPQC morphisms. So that's faithfully flat and quasi-compact. Um, cool. So, so that I'll leave for you as an exercise. So, so two, so now we're in the affine case. So we have, we have now have R to S faithfully flat. So you're supposed to think that here, you're supposed to think S is, oh, sorry, we're, you're supposed to think U is spec S and R is spec X. Sorry, not the way around. X is spec R. And then we have um, we have a uh, we have n and m are R modules. So so let's translate what it would mean for this this diagram to be an equalizer diagram. So so all I'm going to do is stick an n and an m wherever I have f1 and f2, and uh, and uh, um, and and replace all my x's and u's with r's and s's. So, so we want the following to be an, an equalizer diagram. So we want the hom over R from M to N to hom over S from M tensor S to N tensor S. I'm going to stop writing R's under my tensors um, just because all tensors will be over R right now. Um, To, um, over S tensor S. So this is supposed to be an avatar of U cross U over, over X um, of M tensor S tensor S to N tensor S tensor S. So we want this to be an equalizer diagram. All right, so, so hopefully this looks a little bit familiar, like it should, it should look a little bit like this. And in fact, um, you have to unwind this a little bit, but these maps over here, these, these two maps are in fact induced by these two maps. All right, are there any questions about that? So for the step of reducing to the affine case, is it enough to show that if you have a FPPF covering family, you can refine it to one where each of the members is affine, or is this a unrelated? You need a little bit more than that. So okay, you, great. you should think about it. I, so, so all right, what you said, I don't think you used quasi compactness, right. and so yeah, you have to you have to be a little bit careful, and mm -hmm. and the issue will come up when you take the the fiber product of you with itself. Cool. Okay. Um, great. Okay. Um, so, so can anyone um, can anyone tell me? So, does anyone see how to how to how to prove this is an equalizer diagram using the lemma? So, okay. So, what do we have to prove? We have to prove that this map is injective and that its image is the precisely precisely the stuff in the middle which goes to the same place over here. So can anyone tell me how to prove that this map is injective? Uh, 
Well, so, so you take a map here, you take an element here, that's some map F, and you map it over here. And what's that map? It's just you compose with this map from N to N tensor S. And then that gives you a, a map from M to N tensor S and a, a map of, of R modules into a S module automatically extends to a map from M tensor S to N tensor S. Um, is the middle term just the, the first term tensored with S? Uh, so under some finite finiteness hypotheses, it would be. And in general, it's not. Um, that's not quite right. Yeah, so it's it's just left exactness of Hahn. That's that's exactly right. So that's that's a fancy way to say it, Sophia. But it's that's correct. Let's let's say it very concretely. So you have some map here. You compose it with an injective map. If it's zero, then it was already zero. That's the that's um that's uh, that's why. So so the left exactness here meaning injectivity of that first map follows from injectivity of the map from N to N tensor S. Okay, and in fact, the, the way so Sophia said it, left exactness of Hom also, also um, implies exactness in the middle here. So. Let me say a word about that. So checking that this, this is an equalizer diagram is just the ch same as checking that the chain complex you get by replacing these two arrows with their difference is left exact. So meaning there's a zero here and the, the, the image here is the same as the kernel of this map, meaning the difference of these two maps. Um, so, so the way Sophia said it is that we're applying HOM, uh, well, HOM M uh, dash to this map, to, to this complex, and we want that to be left exact. Okay, you have to think a little bit about why you can stick some tensor S's in there. It's, it's not too bad. The point is just that if you've uh, mapped from an R module into an S module, it extends canonically to a, to a map from that R module tensor S into your S module. Um, so, so the same thing, so, but let, let's just be a little bit more, more concrete. So suppose I have a map here, which goes to the same thing over here. I want to show it comes from here. Well, what do you do? You take an element from, uh, uh, of M, I want to say which element of N it goes to, right? Well, it goes to something here, and that thing goes to the same thing in N, N tensor S tensor S uh, along both of these maps. So that element of N tensor S goes to the same thing here under the two maps, that means it comes from here. So that means giving, given an element of M, you can just literally say what element of N it goes to. But, but again, maybe I'll, so I'll just say exactness in the middle, in the middle. Also comes from the level. Yeah, but I, I like Sophia's way of saying that this is about left exactness of Hom. Okay, so uh, so we've now proved full faithfulness. Great. Does anyone have any questions about that? Maybe it feels too easy. I and mean, so the, the somehow the hard thing, meaning the the tricky thing, was the was the proof of this lemma. And that was, that was where we had to do work and we did that last time. All right, does, does anyone have questions about that? All right, so, so I'm gonna pause in the middle of the proof and do something bad. I'm gonna state a corollary of what we've proved. So a corollary is that if F is a quasi-coherent chief on X, Then, well, we defined a, a functor, which I called F at all. So that was uh, a pre-sheaf on uh, the small at all side of X, or we also made a one on the big at all side, but let me just write it on the small at all side. So, so let me just remind you, so F at all of some at all map U to X, here pi is the map, it's just um, you t take the, the inverse image of f along this map pi and evaluate on u. Um, so, so the corollary is that this is a sheaf, the sheaf on x a one. Okay, and the same would be true on f p p f. So, can anyone tell me why this is a corollary? We just take the first. Thing to be a structure sheaf. Yeah, exactly. Right. So we we talked about this a little bit last time. So so um, in the so in the equalizer sequence above. 
So yeah, well, let's say, let me actually just write it out. So proof, so what do we want? We want um, if, if u to v is an HL cover, we want um, the following to be an equalizer diagram, f of v to f of u to f of u cross u over v to be an equalizer diagram. But but this is but this is exactly the Hom equalizer diagram from before. Uh, with uh, if you take F one the first sheet to be O and F two uh, to be F. Cool. All right, so we've actually now constructed some sheaves on the ATL site. It's pretty cool. Um, are there any questions about that? Cool. So, so just as an example, for example, like the, the as an example, we have the sheaf um, O X ATL which sends um, an ATOL map U to X to the global sections of U, of the sheaf OU on U. Okay, so that's, a, that's an example of an ATOL sheaf. It's, a, it's kind of an important one. All right, um, so we've proved full faithfulness uh, of this functor from, from quasi-coherent sheaves on X to descend data relative to U over X. Uh, so what else do we have to prove to, to prove this theorem that, that uh, the FTPF descent for quasi coherent sheets? You need essential surjectivity? Yeah, that's right. So, so we now have to do proof, um, proof of FPPF descent part two. is essential surjectivity. Okay, so, so what do we want? So, so let me just remind you of notation. So you, we have u to x, that's a map f. This is a, a FPPF cover. And we have descent data. We're given descent data F on the phi on u over x. So let me remind you, F is a quasi-coherent sheaf on u. Phi is an isomorphism between its two pullbacks to u cross u, and that isomorphism has to satisfy a condition, namely the co-cycle condition on u cross u cross u. And so what do we want? We want some F tilde. Oh, this is really terrible notation. We want some G, which is a quasi-coherent sheaf on X such that the pullback of G is, is given with an isomorphism to F and moreover the, the sort of canonical uh, descent data on that pullback agrees with V. All right, does anyone have any ideas about how to do this actually? Now this is, we're gonna use the same trick again. It's kind of cool. So, so let's, let's construct G. Okay, so, so step one, is we're going to, again, reduce to the case of an affine morphism. Okay, and, and I'm, I'm gonna again leave this as an exercise for you. It's more or less the same as the previous exercise. 
Okay, so let's rewrite everything in terms of, of, an, of a, like what the situation is uh, for an affine. So we have R to S is our map F. So again, you're supposed to think S is, S, U is spec S and X is, uh, is, is spec R. Um, so we have now a uh, M, which is a S module. And um, and so so what is the descent data? How would you write descent data in this in this uh, in this uh, setting of, of rings? So M we're supposed to think is is the the module whose uh, associated quasi coherent sheaf is is F. So how do we write V? Is the question. So like that R module with an isomorphism from tensored with S to itself? So, uh, oh, oh, so I think maybe, maybe you're talking about G. So out here I'm asking how to write phi, this, this map. So phi is uh, an isomorphism between the two pullbacks of M to U cross U, which is, is also known as spec of S tensor S over R. Yeah, so, so what you want is, is phi it's going to be an isomorphism from M tensor S over R to um, S tensor M over R. Okay, and this is um, this is uh, an isomorphism, an isomorphism of S tensor S modules. Okay, and moreover, it has to satisfy a co-cyclic condition. Which I won't write out. Um, okay, so, so, um, so let's, let's uh, make a construction. So, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna take M, so M maps to M tensor S in two different ways. So one of them is just M goes to M tensor one. The other one is that M goes to phi, ah, sorry, I've written things the wrong, wrong way. Let me, let me write it this way. So one of them is M goes to one tensor M. And the other one is that M goes to phi of M tensor one. Okay, so these are two maps from M to S tensor M. So, so let's, let's suppose that um, M actually was of the form like N tensor S. Like let's suppose M actually came from R. How, how, would, how would N, how would this descent of M have to fit into this, this diagram? How would it relate to these two maps? Anyone? So let's suppose we already knew the theorem, like from what we've proven, like how would, how would we reconstruct this descent of M? So you're supposed to imagine maybe M equals N tensor S here, where here N is a R module. So then here, this would be an N tensor S, this would be a N tensor S tensor S. That's all right, Ali. Any ideas? So, so hopefully this reminds you of an equalizer diagram we've seen earlier on today and, and last time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set K to be the equalizer of this diagram. So that just means the subset of M, which goes to the same thing under these two maps, okay? And the claim is that, um, well, first of all, there's an obvious map from K tensor S um, to M. 
so, so what is it? Well, K is just a subset of M and M is an S module. So if I, if I, can, just, I can just include K into M and then multiply by an element of S. So the claim is that this natural map is an isomorphism. Okay, and, and a, a little bit, I mean, there's, there's more to this claim, which I'm going to, I'm going to elide, which is that when, at, you know, given this isomorphism, one obtains some descent data on M and, and the claim is that it's the same descent data. And so maybe I'll just write compatible with descent data. All right, are there, are there any questions? Okay, so, so maybe let me write this explicitly. So, so um, we can take R to S to S tensor S. So this is the equalizer diagram that we proved was an equalizer diagram earlier in the lemma. We can tensor it with K. Sorry. I'm sorry, we can tensor it with M. And then we get a, we get a diagram just by definition. We get K to M to, uh, how should I say this? If we tensor with M, we get a map M to M tensor S to M tensor S tensor S. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I've confused myself. So let's just tensor with M, we get a map. Here, this is a tensor over S. We get a map, two maps like this. Right, because if you tensor over S with M, S, S, S tensor S just becomes M tensor S. Right? Right. And uh, by definition, K is the kernel of this. And so we want, we want to check, to check that this map induces an isomorphism from K tensor S to F. Great. Okay, so, so there are two steps. So, so step one is that this is true if R to S has a section. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna leave this as an exercise, but maybe it's worth asking. Do you, do you guys see why this is true if R to S has a section? So maybe let me draw the picture. So we have u to x, it's a cover. That cover has a section. And so given f, a quasi-coherent sheaf on, on u, we want g, oh, well, I should say plus descent data. We want g such that, um, F star G is isomorphic in a canonical way to F. Can anyone tell me how to make it? So let's call this section S. Yeah, you can just tensor with R over S or another way of saying that is you set G, uh, yeah, thank you, Benjamin. You set G to be the pullback through S of F. Okay, so you should check that this works. Okay, now two. So now, now what have we done? And so we've actually constructed this K in general. So we have, we have a map. So we have a map K to M. And we want to check that the induced map K tensor S to M is an isomorphism. Okay. And uh, uh, at least according to this exercise, we know how to do this if there's a section. 
So can anyone tell me how to reduce to that case? So how do you reduce to the case where there's a section? So this trick also came up in the proof of our lemma last time. So after tensoring with S, R to S acquires a section. So why is that? Well, we get a map from S to S tensor S over R, and there's a map going the other way, given this by multiplication. Okay. So 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 what that means is that K tensor S tensor S to M tensor S is an isomorphism. Okay, and I claim that this implies that K tensor S to M is an iso. Can anyone tell me why that is? Due to faithful flatness. Yeah, it's exactly right. It's because, because S is faithfully flat over R, And last time we explained that faithful flatness reflects exactness. So being an isomorphism is something you can check. It says that the complex zero to A to B to zero is exact, right? So you can check that after tensoring with S. All right, so we've proven faithfully flat descent. Are there any questions about that? So uh, let's celebrate uh, briefly. Okay, so so I left a lot a lot for you in the exercises. Like these are exercises you must do. They're like these are are among the most important exercises in the course. Uh, you're allowed to do them with help. So so take a look at at this Bosch Loop Kubelman Ray notebook in neuron models, which explains the the situation very well. Um, yeah, so this is this is really important stuff, and very in my view, like some of the most beautiful mathematics um, that, that I've ever seen. Okay, um, so let's uh, we've been going for. We're about halfway through, so let's take a three minute break maybe and then and then continue after that. I do have one question. Is, is FPPF descent sort of the, the strongest descent result for quasi coherent sheaves that one could imagine? Well, so there's FPQC descent, okay, um, FP which is that is the exact same yeah, strong. Yeah. Um, there are a few other descent results which are, I wouldn't say stronger, but a little bit orthogonal. So there are other topologies which have effective descent. Um, so I think there's some, some general like criterion for when a, a, a descent, when a, when a morphism has, has the property of effective descent, which means per quasi coherent sheaves. So uh, like maybe it's called like an effective epimorphism or something like that. I don't actually remember, but uh, I think FPQC is the strongest checkable property that I know of which, where, where descent is effective. I and mean, you could also just say like amorphism of effective descent is like one for which a descent for quasi coherent sheaves holds. And then, okay, the biggest class of morphisms for which descent holds is that, is that class. Like that's a property of amorphism. Sure. Uh, but I, I don't know, like, right. yeah, like you can ask for a checkable description and, and I don't know a better one. Does that answer your question, Sasha? Yeah, more or less. Great. Any other you questions? Must, well, you well, you well, Sorry? You had said that um, the Galois descent is a, is a case for a, a separable morphism. Is there a simple example with, uh, with an inseparable morphism that follows in this same situation? Uh, sure. I, I just wondering if you could yeah. yeah, so, so what I would say is, um, yeah, so, so one, I mean, so certainly, like, there are a lot of uh, faithfully flat inseparable morphisms, like, like, if you take a, a regular scheme, Frobenius is, is um, faithfully flat and and, um, and and finite presentation. Um, sorry, I think I misspoke there. What I mean is that often inseparable morphisms are faithfully flat and finitely presented. Um, uh, so so you could ask um, about uh, descent for along Frobenius, for example, um, and. Uh, it's it's not obvious, but there actually is a nice presentation of um, 
of, of what it what that descent data looks like. So 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 suppose I have x to x and I let's just work over over fp. So I don't have to worry about relative versus absolute probings. And so suppose I you ask me what what it means to be descent data relative to this uh, morphism. So so I claim there's the following equivalence of categories. So I claim there's uh, an equivalence of categories. I, I'm, even though I'm calling this, I'm working over FP, I'm just going to call, call this one the Frobenius twist of X, just to, so I can distinguish them in the notation. Is that OK? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that there's an equivalence of categories between vector bundles on XP Um, so descent data for vector bundles on X over XP. So this is just a statement uh, here. Here X should be a, a smooth variety, just to be safe. Um, well, for, so so okay. So so what I've written here only requires that Frobenius is is faithfully flat in finite presentation, which is is much weaker than X, XP being smooth. But this last equivalence, sort of a, a nice presentation of what this descent data means, really requires smoothness. Um, so in the Galois descent case, it, what, is, what is Galois descent data? You can rewrite being descent data as saying that there's like a semi-linear action of your Galois group on your vector space. Right? So here, I want to give you like a nice description of descent data, not just like unwinding this, um, this sort of monstrous um, uh, uh, dis like co-cycle condition. So what it is, is um, vector bundles on X. So let's call them vector bundles E on X with a flat connection. Nabla from E to E tensor the Kähler differentials. Um, so flat means the, the usual condition that if you, if you compose Nabla with itself, you get zero. Um, and then you, there's an extra condition, which, which follows from the co condition, which is that uh, Nabla has P curvature zero. Okay, and uh, explaining what that means is, is or what, what P curvature is, it would, would take a little bit, would take us uh, too far afield, I think, but one way of saying that, one way of, of understanding this is that the kernel of Nabla uh, is, is going to be a, a vector bundle on XP and, and having P curvature zero is that, that the rank of that vector bundle is the same as the rank of E. So this is a nice, a nice description of a faithfully flat descent along Frobenius in, in some special case. So does that, does that answer, does, is that a, a reasonable answer? Sure. Yeah. So there's a very nice um, paper of Giesecker where he works this stuff out. Um, it's, it, this is, um, it's really cool stuff. So maybe, maybe I can say, uh, so you could ask, well, what if, what if you take a power of Frobenius and there's, um, you could generalize that and ask, well, well what, if, what if you have a, a sheaf on X with descents to XP and XP squared and XP cubed and XP to the fourth and so on, which are all compatible. So that's actually the same as a D module on X. Um, so there, there's a really uh, beautiful and sort of uh, pretty well worked out theory of, of descent along Frobenius of these for, for nice schemes over, over finite fields. Um, yeah, so so that's that's what I can say. It's uh, it, it's not so well studied. So there's a really nice paper of Giesecker on this, and a bunch of paper, recent papers of Aino. Uh, but I think there's a lot of interesting open questions about this, and if if that's something any of you are interested in, I mean, I, I have many questions about about these objects. Um, so so for example, there's a, a famous conjecture of Katz and Grothendieck called the peak curvature conjecture, uh, which which um, is sort of a arithmetic question about the monodromy of flat vector bundles and characteristic zero in terms of their peak curvature when you reduce them on p. All right, so I think, I guess that's, we, we used up the break time. Uh, so are there any other questions before we get back to uh, atel homology? One last kind of pretentious question. So have we essentially shown that a Q -co is a stack? With these co-cycle conditions, or yeah, yeah. So we, we've shown that, that. So, so essential surjectivity here. Uh -huh. uh, well, okay, essential surjectivity, and I mean the, the whole theorem is exactly the statement that if Q co is a stack in the FPPF topology. Okay. Great, perfect. That's a good question. It's not a. It's not an algebraic stack. Uh, right. Of course not. Um, 
well, maybe de depending on your definition of an algebraic mm -hmm. set. Um, okay. So okay, so we've done we've done quasi coherent sheaves. So okay, so the 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 corollary of um, of the full faithfulness part of descent was that quasi coherent sheaves give you sheaves on the taller FPPF site. Um, so so I now owe you representable functors, and we're going to deduce it from from that um, from from that statement. So here's the theorem. So so suppose uh, p from x to y. Maybe I'll, I'll use the same notation as before. P from U to X. It's a faithfully flat cover. Uh, by faithfully flat cover, I mean FPPF covers. Okay, then the functor P star from now schemes over x to descent beta for schemes relative to the cover u over x, and I'll say what I mean by this, is, well, it's actually not an equivalence of categories. It's, it's fully faithful. So, so can anyone say what I mean by, by descent data for schemes on u over x? <coughs> or does anyone have a guess? I mean, is it just gonna be a scheme on u such that, and an isomorphism once you pull back, so that it like co-cycle stuff on triple intersections again? Exactly right, yeah. So it's the exact same definition, you just replace a quasi coherent sheep with a scheme. Um, so, okay, so, so verbally, what is that? It's what, what Ali said. It's a scheme over U, an isomorphism between its two pullbacks to U cross U, and that isomorphism has to satisfy the exact same co-cycle condition as before. Okay, so, so let's prove it. Um, so, so, um, so, so step one, which I, again, I'm gonna leave as an exercise as always, is um, reduced to the case where everything is affine. And then there's a little bit of subtlety here because there's one more thing you have to assume is affine, which is the, the scheme you're, you're giving descent data for and the, the, the schema over here, the scheme over x. So, so u, x, and the scheme over x should be affine. Um, and, but in fact, in fact it's, it's for what I'm about to say, it's enough uh, to uh, reduce to the case, the, the case of kind of affine schemes over x. Um, so, so in particular, where you, you're, for what I'm gonna say, you don't have to reduce to the case where x and u themselves are, are affine, just, just that the scheme, just the, the schemes we're trying to understand morphisms between have to be affine. So that's actually a substantially easier reduction. Okay, so, so once we've done that, can anyone tell me uh, uh, what to do? So just so I understand what's going on, this is, is this colloquially, would you say this, this is saying that you can descend in at most one width? Uh, so, so um, it's, it's, that's part of it, but it's, it's more. So uh, let, let's actually write down what we're trying to show. So we're trying to show that if, if, um, if uh, what's, what's, what are some good names for schemes over X, Y and Z maybe? So, so given Y, Z, X schemes, we're trying to show the following diagram is an equalizer diagram. So HOM, and then I'll, I'll say colloquially what that means in a second argument. We're trying to show that HOM X from Y to Z to HOM over U from, uh, I guess it should be P star Y to P star Z to HOM U cross U over X of, um, I'm gonna elide the, the, the pullbacks. Like like the pi one and pi two, because the two pullbacks are the same. 
we're trying to show that this is an equalizer diagram. So what does that mean? It means this is injective, right? So, so well, that's that's kind of obvious if you if you pull back. Um, I'm using that using the use trajectory. Uh, if you pull back a, a morphism of schemes, it, it, the two two different morphisms have to pull back to to different things. Um, so as long as you're pulling back along a faithfully flat morphism, and we'll we'll prove it. But I, I claim it's sort of at least geometrically clear. Okay, but then the real content is that you can go the other way. It's that if you have a morphism on U and it maps to the same thing when you pull it back to U cross U, then it actually comes from X. So it's saying that you can descend morphisms, or in other words, morphisms form a sheaf. Okay, and that, that in fact is what we're what we're trying to prove. Right, that, that morphisms form a sheaf. Um, all right. So are there are there any uh, does anyone have any ideas about how, how we might go about proving this? So we're gonna deduce it from what we've already proven about quasi coherent sheaves. So so let me remind you as an exercise I suggested reducing to the case uh, where where y and z are affine, so without with L over X. So without loss of generality, we can assume Y is the relative spec over X of some quasi-coherent sheaf of algebras, let's call it OY, and Z is the relative spec over X of some OZ. Or here, here these are, these are uh, quasi-coherent Sheaves of algebras. All right. Does anyone see what to do now? So here we're using the exercise that I've, I've assigned you to reduce to the case where these where these um, schemes are are at. All right. So let's let's rewrite this diagram. Well, what is this diagram? It's it's Hom now in 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 the, the category of, of quasi coherent algebras. Of O Z into O Y. Right. If you'd like these, what are these algebras? It's just you take the push forward of the structure sheet from Y to X and from Z to X. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop writing two co algebra here. Okay, and then so I'm yeah. So we want this to be an equalizer diagram. Okay, can anyone tell me why it is? Yeah. So so Benjamin says yeah. Use the theorem for sheaves of algebras. That's right. So so. What do we have to show? Well, we have to show that this map is injective. Well, that's true even if you ignore the algebra structure, right? If you ignore the algebra structure, you're just looking at a map of quasi coherent sheaves, and we already know that's injective. And then we have to show that if we have something here, uh, which which is a morphism of algebras, and it respects, uh, uh, it, it goes to the same thing here. Well, we know from before that it, it comes from a map of quasi coherent sheaves here, and we have to show that that is actually a map of quasi coherent algebras. And that just follows from the fact that, that descent is functorial. Like we showed that we have an equivalence to categories. So, so what is being a map of algebras? It's like commuting with a bunch of maps of quasi coherent sheaves. And that's something that, that, all, that we know is true over here. So it's true over here because pullback is an equivalence of categories. That's the, the theorem of group. Okay. So this, this follows from before. And the corollary of that is that um, if, uh, let's say, Z is any X scheme, then hum into Z is a sheaf on, well, X F to P F or X A tall or the small atoll site, and so on. OK. Are there any questions about that? Cool. 
All right, so, so maybe let me make some remarks. So first of all, um, this pullback is not actually a centralized surjective. In general. Uh, for, for schemes. So, so, um, so, so there's, a, there's a word actually for, for descent data for along an atoll cover. So, so descent data along an atoll cover. So descent data for schemes uh, relative to an atoll cover. Mu over x is, is called an algebraic space. So if you have ever wondered what an algebraic space is, now you know. And I mean, there's a little bit of a terminological issue here. So some people make, make some maybe separated assumptions on algebraic spaces, which are, are not, not here in this definition. Um, but, but, that's, uh, but this is at least one, one standard definition. OK, so, so the, if you'd like an example of descent data, which doesn't come from an actual scheme, just Google algebraic space, which is not a scheme. And, then, and that will give you an example. Um, OK. Uh, it, it is effective, effective uh, for, so, so it is essentially surjective. Sorry, some people call the cases where, where uh, this pullback functor is uh, equivalence of categories, cases of effective descent. So sometimes I might say it, it is effective or descent is effective to mean that this pullback map is, a, is an equivalence of categories. So it is essentially surjective for uh, affine schemes. And it's also essentially surjective for, um, for polarized schemes. So what do I mean by that? I mean that if you have descent data for a X scheme, for a schema on U over X with an, F on, with an ample line bundle, so meaning the descent data is, is you also give descent data for the line bundle, then, then, you, then you can actually descend. The scheme, so so you can descend like projective varieties as long as you descend them with an ample line level, um, and that again, I mean that that's a fun exercise to work out. It's more or less the, the same. It more or less follows the, uh, from, from from the, the case of quasi coherent schemes. Um, just you kind of replace the hom with proj here, for example. That's one way to do it. Um, yeah. Uh, so so um, sorry, you replace spec here with with proj. That's, that's one way to think about it. And all of these examples and others are, are given in chapter six of neuron models. So it's a really nice, it's a really nice reference. All right, are there any questions about that? Okay, ju just um, let me remind you, we, we talked about some examples. So, so we now have a bunch of examples of, of sheaves on the Atoll site. Um, so for example, GM is a sheave, so this, sends u to o u of u cross. We now know that's a sheaf. So we have mu l. So that sends u to a set of elements in o u such that uh, f to the l equals one. So we know now that's a sheaf. Uh, we have z mod l, which sends u to set of continuous maps from u into the constant scheme, the constant scheme z mod lz, so just l points. Um, then we can also do things like Hilb, Hilbert schemes of projective space. So that's a scheme, right? We know that's a, a, a scheme. So the functor it represents is a scheme, is a sheaf rather. We can take pn, what does that represent? That represents like a line bundle with a surjective map from the uh, trivial bundle of, of rank uh, n plus one. So, so we know that's a sheaf and so on. So these are all sheaves. Cool. Okay. Um, and then we've already talked about this a little bit. Um, so, so I think Arvind asked a, a very nice question about it. So, so how is this related to other forms of descent you might have seen, like Galois descent? And so, so I really. Um, so, so um, this is a remark slash exercise. 
So, so I really do want you guys to work out. So to work out Galois descent from this POV. So if you're, if you're registered for the course, um, like please really do that. And, and I'm gonna ask someone to, to present on it maybe next week. So, um, uh, you know, I, I urge someone to volunteer and there will be, there will be more times where, where I ask you to present on something. So, uh, so uh, if, if you're interested, you should volunteer and you can meet with me uh, during office hours on Monday and we can talk about it if you're having trouble, but please discuss this on the Discord. Um, and then, and then we'll, we'll like someone will, will briefly present on this next week, if that's all right. Um, so, so for those registered in the course, just, just be aware. Um, cool. Uh, are there any questions on that before I, before I move on to starting to talk about cohomology? All right, so, so let me uh, briefly kind of remind you all what I owe you um, in terms of the definition of atoll cohomology, and then, and then soon we'll get there. All right, so what do we need to define cohomology? So can anyone, does anyone uh, re remind you, can anyone remind me of my debt to you about uh, like what, what the sort of missing ingredients are before we can define cohomology of these abelian sheaves up here? So by these abelian sheaves, I mean, uh, for example, these top three also like, OX and that kind of thing. That we have an abelian category. Yeah, so we need two things. So the, the goal, so part one is that um, the category of sheaves, the category of abelian sheaves, abelian sheaves on X et al is in fact abelian. Um, so that's, that's step one. Um, and then step two is we need one more thing about it. Can anyone remind me? What that was? Oh, so Benjamin asks, we hadn't proved that representable functors were sheaves yet. So yeah, so, so that the fact that representable functors are sheaves is, is immediate from this, from, well, it's the statement of this corollary, but it, it's, yeah, it's immediate from this descent for morphisms of, of schemes. Thank you, thank you, Benjamin. That's a that's a good question. All right. So so I I owe you one more thing besides that the category is, is abelian. Can anyone tell me what it is? Global sections are left exact. Yeah. So enough injectives. So yeah. So I do owe you global sections are left inject exact, but that was an exercise. So I claim you owe it to me. I don't owe it to you. Um, and and then we need enough injectives. And depending on, on what you require of your abelian categories, um, like it, it may be that, uh, that, that enough injectives are automatic. Like for example, if, if your abelian categories are AB5 categories in the, in the terminology of Tohoku, but I, I'm actually just gonna produce enough injectives. Okay, so, so let's, um, let me tell you, um, we're not gonna have time to do this today. I think we only have 10 minutes left. So let me kind of tell you what the crucial ingredient is. So the, the crucial ingredient so, so maybe the, maybe I'll, I'll make a remark first. So the, a remark is that that uh, both both of these facts are true are true for the category of abelian sheaves of abelian sheaves on any set on any set, meaning any category with a gross mean topology. So I'm not gonna prove it in that generality. I, I, I decided um, the, the proof is actually quite beautiful. Um, it, it would take too long. So I'm gonna kind of take the, the fastest route I, I found to, to proving this fact, which will actually use facts about the HL site. Um, it'll also work for the FPPF site, for example, also. And I think every other site we, we discuss in this class. Um, but, but in your life, you may run across sites where, where you need this more general fact. So I wanna mention it for culture. Um, all right, so, so what's the crucial ingredient? So the, the crucial ingredient in, in, um, in, well, really in the, enough injectives is gonna be quite easy actually. So, so really the crucial ingredient will be improving this category is abelian, uh, will be the following theorem, which again, I won't prove in this generality, but, but I wanna state it in this generality. 
So suppose tau is a site. Uh, so then, then the theorem is that the forgetful functor from, from sheaves on tau to pre-sheaves on tau. So let me just remind you, a sheaf on tau was a contravariant functor satisfying the sheaf condition, which was that some diagrams were equalizer diagrams. In other words, they can glue. Um, Pre-sheaves were just contravariant functors. And, and the theorem is that this functor has a left adjoint. And, and um, so, so which we'll, we'll call, call sheafification. Okay, and, and we won't prove this theorem. We'll, we'll, we'll just prove it in the case we need, so we'll prove this for uh, tau, the small ital site. Okay, and, and if you want, I, I do encourage you to, to look up the proof in general because it's actually awesome. Uh, it's just a little bit too much. Um, oh, too much for this course. I mean, it's not, it's not hard, it's just long and, and, and um, but, but long and boring and awesome, my claim. Um, so uh, maybe I, I can't resist, so I'll tell you what I think is so cool about it. So, so there's, uh, there's a, a functor called plus, which takes a pre-sheaf, um, and, and you like try to brutally make it a sheaf by, by, taking, by, by replacing its values with some, some, uh, some limit. Um, okay, and it doesn't actually make it a sheaf, but when you apply it twice, it makes it a sheaf. So there's some kind of square root of sheafification called plus functor. Which, which shows up in this proof. All right. Um, all right, so, so we need some preliminaries. Um, how much, okay, I do have time for the preliminaries. So the preliminaries. So first of all, um, I wanna just define some operations you can do with sheaves. So, so the standard ones are gonna be uh, push forward and pull back. Okay, so so what's the what's the situation of, of, of what what in what situation can we can we push forward? So um, let's discuss push forwards first. So suppose uh, f from tau one to tau two is a continuous morphism of sites. So can anyone, anyone remind me what that means? So what does it mean for a morphism of sites to be continuous? Or what is what even is a morphism of sites? What kind of object is it? Okay, so Sophia says it's a functor from tau two to tau one. That's right. So it's a it's a functor, a covariant functor, um, which I'll call F inverse from tau two to tau one, which um, preserves fiber products. That's right. So you're supposed to think this means it sends intersections to intersections and, uh, and sends covering families to covering families. So, so this, uh, just a reminder, this, this patient F inverse is supposed to be suggest suggestive. So the, the situation you should keep in mind is that if you have a continuous map of topological spaces, you can send open maps on the target to open maps on the source, or sorry, open sets in the target to open sets in the source by taking their pre-image through your map. So, so this functor F inverse you're supposed to imagine is take pre-images under a continuous map of spaces F. All right, so here's the definition. So uh, given, uh, a functor G, uh, sorry, given a sheaf G, which is a sheaf um, on tau one, I'm going to define uh, 
the push forward of G, so that's F lower star of G, which is a, a sheaf on tau two. So it's defined as follows. Find the, uh, well, what do I have to do? I have to say what it does to objects of tattoo, right? So F lower star G evaluated on U, which is an object of tattoo, is defined equal to G of, well, I need to, to use tau one somehow, so I'm gonna take F inverse of U. So, so F inverse is a functor, let me remind you, remind you it's a functor from tau two to tau one. So given an object of tau two, U, this is an object of tau one, and then it makes sense to evaluate GI. And no, this is the exact same formula as, as the usual formula for push forwards, which is why I've, I've written, written things this way. So this is the usual formula for push forwards. Cool. Are there any questions about that? Cool. Um, so the exercise, which, which you must do, this is again a very important exercise, is that uh, F star of G is a sheaf. So, so a priori, um, all I've done is descri describe for you, well, first of all, only its value as on objects, you have to figure out what it does to morphisms too. And well, if you put a morphism here, you also just put a morphism here and that's, that's what it does. Um, but uh, a priori, all I've done is produce a pre-sheaf, uh, namely a, a contrary functor. So, so you have to, you have to um, check that it's actually a sheaf and it's, it, follows from, it follows immediately from, from the properties here. Um, cool. So I think I'm out of time. So, so next time I will uh, tell you about stocks, um, which are sort of the, the only example of, of, of pullbacks that we can do yet without shootification. And then we'll use those to, to sheafify and group things are abelian and make enough injectives and so on. So it's gonna be great. Uh, great, so I'll stick around for a few minutes if anyone has any questions, but I'll stop recording now. <laughs>